Good morning guys, welcome to a brand new video. Today is currently June 7th and to start off the day here in the office, I'm currently overviewing and going through some of our client ad campaigns. Now, I can't show you too much in screen here, but what I wanna do is show you a bit more behind the scenes and the process I'm going through uh, for this client in particular. Now, a bit of backstory, this client is a client that before we started working together had absolutely no website traffic, no previous pixel data, um, and they are an e-commerce store. So what I thought I would do is write up something here on the whiteboard, jump in and explain the process and the strategy we use to get results for this client. So let's hop into it. So I've written all this information down here on the flip chart. Um, this, just so you know, is it isn't to be set in stone. These are kind of rough numbers this is a rough strategy but obviously i can't go too much in detail about everything in this short clip but um hopefully you understand a bit more of our thought process that goes into it so as mentioned this is all for an e-commerce store that has no pixel data and no website traffic meaning essentially we we came into this client with absolutely no information. Facebook didn't know anything about them. The Pixel did not have any purchase history, no view content history. They didn't even have a Pixel installed. So we were essentially starting uh, out with this client with zero information. And this is the strategy we used. So the first thing we did for this client was start off with detailed interest targeting, leveraging Facebook's universal data. Now, obviously, if we'd had previous pixel data, if we had previous website traffic, then we could use the, the information that the pixel had to, to get more customers. But because we didn't have any of that, we had to use Facebook's universal data to find out that information. So we started by leveraging uh, interest targeting. Now this client is a pen e-commerce store, so they sell um, high quality pens. It, it's something like, to the closest thing I could think is something like Mont Blanc. It's not quite as high quality as that, but it's a similar kind of brand, okay? So what we started doing, we, we started doing more research and did interest targeting based off of that. So we used things like Mont Blanc, uh, we did research into other pen companies, interests like calligraphy, writing, art, uh, cr you know, creative design, and we, we tested a ton of different interests. Now the goal with this initially, because we had no previous data, was to get as much website traffic as possible and get at least 1,000 view contents. Now a view content for anybody that doesn't, uh, doesn't know is when, you know, somebody, if website traffic, for example, if, or a page view, if somebody just lands on the home page, view content would be if they landed, uh, they, they actually visited a page of a specific product then the view content pixel would fire. So let's say they landed on the website, they saw this pen they like, they clicked on it and started viewing the pictures, the view content pixel would fire. So our initial goal was to get people onto the website and then at least viewing the products. Now the goal initially with here was to get a 1,000 view contents in total, ideally 20 to 25 a day. Now, once we had this information, the pixel is gathering data points. The pixel is gathering information. So obviously, imagine this for a second. You have no information, none at all. You just start to target people by interest. Okay, great, that's level one. Now, if somebody actually views content, they actually view a specific product, that person is going to be higher up the ladder. That person's gonna be more valuable to us than somebody that just lands on the website. So once Facebook starts to get more data on this, we can optimize more for view contents. And as soon as we have around a thousand, again, remember, these are just rough numbers. This isn't exact, um, this is just rough. Once we have around a thousand view contents, we can then go to the next level, which is start to optimize for add to carts. Stage one, page view, view content, and then obviously above that, again, the next perfect customer will be somebody who adds to cart here. So once we start optimizing for add to carts, the goal is to get 500 lifetime add to carts or 20 to 25 add to carts a day. Same scenario, who do you think's a more ideal customer? Somebody who's actually adding the product to the cart but not checking out, or somebody who just views content? Obviously this person is going to be better, right? So we want as much information on these people who are adding to cart as possible and at this stage we can then leverage the data that we've got from view content so 
Again, I'm not gonna to go too much into detail about this, but you may be able to create a lookalike audience based off of people who viewed content and then target those people for, um, you know, to optimize for add to carts. Now, the more data we get on add to carts, over time, Facebook will learn and the, the cost per add to cart will drop down. You know, when you first initially start optimizing for add to carts, pulling random numbers out of the sky here, you might pay $15 in add to cart. As you start to get 100, 200, 300 add to carts, Facebook's gonna have more information and more data on the people who are adding to cart and therefore that cost per add to cart will drop. It will get cheaper. It might drop down from 15 to, to 10 to seven to five to $2, okay? Now, once we've got roughly around 500, the pixel is really trained enough to then go to the, the next level here, which is optimizing for purchase. And the goal for, for this, for e-com especially, is to aim to get 250 to 300 purchases. At that point, Facebook and the Pixel has a really good understanding of the buyers, all right? Once we've got this, again, you know, 250 to 300, we really want to aim from 20 to 25 a day. Same situation as this. If you've got 10 buyers compared to 100 buyers, Facebook's gonna have more information. The more buyers you have, the cheaper the cost per acquisition of the customer, uh, the cheaper the cost per purchase. Now these are completely rough numbers, but this is kind of the strategy that we followed. Um, and you know, on, in the background of that, we do have retargeting ads running, which are retargeting people who added to cart but didn't check out. And we ret we're retargeting those people with discount codes, with special offers to try and push them over the edge. Now obviously, when you're not getting a ton of traffic, these are, these are just some low hanging fruit. You can get some good ROAS, but you're never really gonna scale huge off retargeting campaigns if you're not getting a ton of add to carts in the first place, which is why it is still important to um, obviously follow these layers down. And you know, when we're retargeting one, uh, you know, again, there's, there's lots of different ad sets, there's loads of different split testing we do, but again, at a basic level, you know, you could retar retarget something as simple as, uh, and create a custom audience of people who added to cart, you know, in the last one day, seven days, 30 days, 60 days, 180 days, 90 days, whatever you want, okay? Um, and, and we can get some really easy purchases from that. And just remember guys as well, this is really, really rough estimates, right? Okay, this is a this is a good strategy, but you know, depending on the business, depending on the product, depending on the price point, there's so many different factors depending on the authority of the brand. You know, these, these may change. I've worked with companies before where they might have a thousand view contents. You might want to try to start optimizing for ads to carts. It's through the roof. Or you might have a ton of ads to carts. You try to optimize for purchase. It's through the roof. It's really expensive. Therefore, you need more data at this level. Um, there's so many different factors to, to take into consideration. I've, I've also experienced it the other way around as well, where, you know, you might only need a hundred ads to carts and then you might be able to start optimizing for purchases. Boom profitable because it's a great product because you know they um, you know the rest of their marketing is really good they've got a, a really good follow-up email sequence which grabs purchases off the back of your cold traffic campaigns so there's a million things to take into consideration and what you've got to understand is as Facebook advertisers and as an agency it's your goal to get this right now obviously you can consult them on their website you can give them information and recommendations to how they can improve their website but if it's a really bad website, they've got a really bad funnel, they haven't got an email follow-up sequence, maybe it's got a really bad landing page, maybe it's really bad products, really bad shipping times, all of these things, that's out of your control. So you can't, you know, obviously the better the rest of that is, the easier your job is as an advertiser, but your goal is to just get this part of the business right. And another thing to bear in mind is data is everything, right? So let's say you've got a thousand add to carts, but you really don't have that many purchases it actually may be cheaper for you to get purchases when optimizing for add to carts, just because you don't have that much data for purchases yet. So data is understanding, data is everything, especially when it comes to Facebook advertising. One more final note, I know I keep saying that, <laughs> um, but this is really important to note. There's a, a million other factors as mentioned. So let's say you're getting a ton of add to carts, like loads of add to carts, but really bad purchases. It may be something to do with, maybe they sw whack on a $20 shipping charge. Again, that's out of your control. So maybe you could consult your client and say, maybe increase the price of the product, but drop the cost of shipping because we're getting a ton of add to carts, but people aren't purchasing. That could be one of the factors, all right? So there are a million reasons why 
this might not work. But again, this is just a good structure that we tend to follow and skeleton that we go off of for our clients. Now, finally, just to show you down here, um, this is just the difference really and just a visualization um, of an untrained pixel and a trained pixel. Now, the pixel is something that a lot of people don't understand. So I'm gonna try and break this down with images in layman's terms for you to, to try and understand how it works. So, so I want you to see these boxes here, okay? And these boxes here are audience sizes. And these red and green dots are people and time. So a green dot here would be a purchase and a red dot here would be somebody that doesn't purchase. Now, when you've got an untrained pixel, what happens is you run your ad and Facebook shows your ad to this person. Okay, great, you might get a purchase. But then an untrained pixel is still going to go through that same size audience and it's going to have a failed purchase, have a failed purchase, failed purchase. And as this goes along, we're spending time and money. So let's say along the top here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it shows it to, and by the way, this is rough numbers, you know, um, you know. so it shows it to six people and you'd get two purchases. Now you're paying for your ad to be shown in front of all of these people. This is what an untrained pixel does, okay? You can see it's the same audience size, you're spending all the money, you're gonna go all the way down. Now on a trained pixel over here, what Facebook does, because of all the data it has, all the data points that it understands, a trained pixel will know your ideal customer. So rather than just showing it to a ton, if you look over here on untrained, rather than showing it to a ton of people who aren't gonna buy, Facebook knows and has the data points of people who are more likely to buy, so it's gonna show it to them first. So a trained pixel will show it to a buyer, a buyer, somebody that's not gonna buy, a buyer, a buyer, a buyer, a few people that won't buy, a buyer, a buyer, a buyer. And eventually, it's gonna show it to all of those buyers first. Now, as you can see here between the two, the audience size is exactly the same. But as you've got time and as you've got money, Facebook isn't going to show it to this bottom half, meaning you're saving money and your cost per purchase is going to be cheaper. Now at this point here, you know, as, as you can start running ads, you're not getting purchases, it's your job to cut the ad off and stop running it. But you've got to bear in mind, I'm showing you a square here that's got 36 dots in, 50 dots in, whereas really we're talking about audience sizes here of millions and millions of people. Okay, so realistically your ad isn't gonna show to 50 people and then you're gonna exhaust the audience and then it's gonna stop making money, right? We're talking about audience sizes of thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. So this is why when you have a trained pixel, the ROAS is much better, your ROI is better, because you're not spending money reaching people and getting failed purchases. Here, you have to exhaust all this audience to get the same amount of purchases as you would in the top half of a trained pixel, meaning your ROAS could be double, triple, quadruple, 10X, okay? Now, and this is the same, but bear in mind that this is just talking purchases, but this works on any level of the funnel here. This works for, for view contents, it's the same situation. As you get more view content uh, information and you start to have a trained pixel for view content, it's going to reach those people first and the cost per view content will drop. Same with add to cart, same with purchase. So again, I hope this made sense to you all. Hopefully you understand it. I know this clip went on for, for a long time, but I get a lot of questions about Facebook advertising. And it's not something I've spoken a ton about um, on this YouTube channel, so yeah. Hopefully that helps, hope you understand it. Again, this is generally what we use for e-commerce stores that have no pixel data, no traffic when you first start working, when you first start working together. If you work with, if you go and work with the business that already has a ton of pixel data, you might be able to start here. So that, that's the main difference, right? You might already, because of the pixel data, because of the traffic, you might be able to come straight in and boom, optimize for this from day one, okay? But um, yeah, hopefully that helped. And if you have any questions about Facebook ads, anything like that, drop it in the comment section down below. So I know that was a long clip, but I hope you found value in that. Um, I know this is a very heavily Facebook ads focused video so far, but what I thought I would also do now is just jump into my PC really quickly and show you a really good way that you can actually optimize um, your ad sets and optimize your campaigns to kind of get through those different levels at a, qu a quicker pace and drop your uh, cost per conversion. So let's hop into screen now and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm just inside one of my client's ad accounts right now and I'm inside one of our website conversions uh, campaigns that is optimized for add to carts. 
So as you can see here right now, the day has only just pretty much started. So this ad really hasn't spent that much, but it's doing really well. We're getting 23 cents uh, per ad to cart. We spent a total of 160 today. At an ad set level here, we go into view charts. Now what you can do here, you can look at performance, demographics, and placement. So what we'll do right now is we will take a look at demographics. So if we click demographics here right now, you can see all of this information. And obviously, as mentioned, we've only got seven ad to cart, so there really isn't that much data there. Um, you know, this plays more uh, of a part when you've got 70, 100, 700 ad to carts, then this data will, will really show some interesting facts. But if we take a look just here right now, I mean, to be fair, even with seven, this is still really beneficial to understand. We can see here, so the, the, the blue lines here are the results, which are the add to baskets. The green is the reach. So we can kind of ignore the reach here for a second. We want to look at the actual conversion, which is the add to cart. So if you see here, based off of this data, all seven of the people that added to cart were men. All seven and zero women. So if you go over to men right now, if we were just targeting men, if we were just targeting men, rather than 23 cents an add to cart, we would have actually been paying 14 cents per result, so 14 cents per add to cart. Now, if you take that a step further, if you look down here, you've got all the age groups of so 13 to 17, 18, 24, blah, 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 blah. And if you have a look right down here, boom, 65 plus, all seven of them, all seven of them were 65 plus. So if we had targeted in this ad set just men, 65 plus, we would have paid five cents per add to cart. Now, one thing's, I wanna make one thing clear. You, what you do not wanna do is go in, just edit the ad, remove those variables. Because if you do that, the ad may, may take a few days to learn and your results may go trash for a few days. But instead, what you can actually do, so if you go back here, so what you can do here, um, if you go inside of duplicate, now I'm not actually going to do this, but if, you, if I duplicated the ad set and click duplicate, so what I could do here inside of age is I could literally just do 65 to 65 plus men. So then what I can do essentially is just target those people. So duplicate the ad set and alongside the current ad set, split test just those um, audiences, just that information that we got from viewing the charts. So this is a really good way to, again, get that cost per conversion down quite a lot. With seven add to baskets, it's really not that much data, but you know, as you get more and more information, just go into the view charts, look at the information. So not only right there as well, I'll show you something else here. So if we go inside of view charts again now, so if you go to placement here as well, you can see Facebook, Audience Network, Instagram, and Messenger. So if you were running ads to all of these um, other places, then again, you could see where the results are coming from. We've done this, we've optimized for Facebook because Facebook were getting results. Same goes up here for device type. So now this is mobile and desktop, but if you go ahead and click desktop only, nothing's coming up. And why is that? Well, that's because we've already done this optimization ourselves and we realized that mobile was getting all of the results. So we optimized that, we cut off desktop and are now actually targeting mobile only because that was what was getting all of the results. And you know, rather than actually exhausting ad spend, spending money on desktop, We've decided to cut that, just go all in on mobile, and we're not spending that money, wasting that money, therefore our cost per add to cart dropped drastically. So just something to bear in mind now. And I've said this a few times, but this is still early in the day. This is not enough data to go off of anything. But at scale, this will be really, really helpful when it comes to lowering your cost per conversion. So yeah, hopefully that helped. So I'm overviewing a lot of the lessons here inside of the Social Media Marketing Academy. I stand up for two seconds and someone has replaced me. What are you doing? <coughs> Mate, you are so damn cute, it's unreal. Anyone ever told you that? Hey? Cutie pie. Oh, okay then, so what I want to quickly do is make just a short clip here for a second and speak to you about things that I think as an entrepreneur or even for a happy, healthy life, I think you should quit. So the first thing you should quit is trying to please everyone. Let me tell you this from experience. 
you are not going to please everyone. You are not going to make everybody happy. So you are best just doing you. Be 100% unapologetically yourself. And if people like it or if people don't like it, doesn't matter. Because if you do or you don't, people are gonna love you and some people are going to hate you. The second thing then that you need to quit for a happy, healthy, successful life is you need to quit fearing change. Don't be afraid of change. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with consistency. There's absolutely nothing wrong with routine. But don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid of innovation. Think about it. The person you are maybe right now or the person you are that makes a thousand dollars a month or two thousand dollars a month isn't the same person that you need to become to make a hundred thousand a month or two hundred thousand a month or ten thousand a month even you need to change you need to become a better version of yourself you need to do different things you need to create different habits quit fearing and being scared of difference and change the third thing you need to quit is living in the past all you have is right now okay and all you should be looking towards is the future people that dwell on the past people that look back and mope about okay they're not going forward they're going backwards think of the goals that you want to achieve reverse engineer those goals into daily tasks okay and every single day focus on the here the now the present focus on those tasks make it happen take action and watch your life transform into what you want it to become. You've probably made a ton of mistakes because guess what, you're a human being. I have made so many mistakes, it's unreal. Now, the only way mistakes are actually an issue is if you don't learn from them. If you make a mistake in the past and you make that same mistake again, shame on you, okay? That's your own fault, you didn't learn from your mistake. Everyone makes mistakes and mistakes actually aren't mistakes. They're lessons providing you actually learn from them and, and, and don't make them again, okay? So stop living in the past. Your, your past does not equal your future. You need to focus on the today. Be present for today. Be grateful to be alive today. God, life is an absolute blessing, but also be focusing on the, on the future, what you want to achieve, what you want to become, and focus on becoming the best version of yourself. Number four, stop putting yourself down. If you don't believe in yourself, who on earth is going to believe in you. Stop telling yourself you're not this, you're not that, and focus on what you are. Focus on your strengths and double down on your strengths. Stop telling yourself you're not worthy of this, you're not worthy of that, you're not good enough for this, or you're not good enough for that person, or you are, you can achieve and become whatever you want. And if you're watching this right now, I'm just gonna tell you, you're a beautiful person. Life is a blessing. Be grateful to be alive, honestly. Don't put yourself down. Tell yourself that you're beautiful on a, on, a, on a daily basis. Tell yourself you're a great person. Tell yourself that you earn X amount of dollars. Tell yourself every single day that you are the person that you want to become. Not that you want it, tell yourself that you are it and literally affirm that stuff into existence, all right? Now, the fifth thing that you need to quit is over thinking. If you want to be successful in business, trust me, you need to be decisive. Learn to make a decision quick and accept it and go all in on it. Don't overthink things and then that overthinking actually leads into procrastination, which gets you nowhere. Overthinking and procrastination will kill your business. It will kill your happiness levels. It will, it's the biggest time waster. Stop and quit overthinking. But overall today has actually been a really, really, really productive day. Now there's really not too much that I could have shown you today, just because it was one of those days where I had to get my head down, pop my headphones on, and just do really tedious tasks inside of the PC. Basically this whole day, all I have been doing is overviewing um, the videos that have been edited for the Social Media Marketing Academy. So I've just been in my computer watching course videos for hours and hours on end. So it's one of those things that I just had to get done, but not really much I could document. So I'm hoping you kind of enjoyed more of a um, informational style vlog today in front of the flip chart there and inside of the PC. I know we spoke a lot about Facebook advertising. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. The Social Media Marketing Academy update is coming very soon, meaning I'm gonna start having a ton more um, sales calls with prospects and potential clients and therefore gonna have a lot more to document inside of the vlog. If you have any questions that you want me to answer in the next video, drop them down below. Hit that subscribe button if you are new and I will see you in the next video. Take care.